How many people do you wish worked here right now? 45. So you have 15 people that you have jobs for, yes. but you can't find them. Cannot. How much money in lost business is there in not being able to hire the people that you want? Around $5 million. He's never claimed to be an economist. Thank you. But while taping the series during the Great Recession of 2008, he did notice something important. All anybody was talking about was the number of people who were out of work. But on dirty jobs, even then, everywhere we went, we saw help wanted signs. It turns out dozens of real-life economists and other researchers have a possible explanation. A long-term decline in male labor force participation. Or as one think tank summarized it, men not at work. This is a men problem by and large, right? Seems to be. Look back to the 1950s and 98% of men in their so-called prime working years had a job or were looking for one. That number has fallen ever since to the point where today more than 7 million men have essentially dropped out of the workforce. We've given a lot of people a lot of options. And incredibly, one of those options is do nothing. Do nothing. Roe and I met at Empire Metal, a fabrication and finishing shop in Queens, New York, and where, much like manufacturing shops nationwide, finding skilled workers like these is a growing challenge. We have more jobs than we have people for, about one and a half jobs for every one worker. Jay Timmons, who leads the National Association of Manufacturers, describes all this as a profound problem for the companies he represents. 99.9% .9 of them will say that their number one challenge right now is being able to fill those open jobs. So you are here as a representative of more than 14,000 manufacturers in these United States. And the number one problem for 99 out of 100 of them yeah. is filling jobs. Yeah. I never thought I'd be able to say that. But now it's kind of an all hands on deck. We've got to fill these jobs that are open. And there are nearly 800,000 of those jobs open right now, according to the latest federal count, a number that surged in recent years as companies reinvest in American-made products, or try to anyway. And with manufacturing workers earning more than $30 an hour on average, Timmons says the problem is not pay, but perception. It used to be dirty, dark, and dangerous. Today, it's very sleek. It's very technology-driven. And that's what we saw when we visited Electrosoft, a company outside Philadelphia that makes circuit boards for everything from missiles to submarines. So over there is the quality area okay. where we do first piece article testing, final testing. But CEO Here's Carla Trotman the says they could be doing more if only she finished, had the workers together, to do it. How many people work here right now? 30. How many people do you wish worked here right now? 45. So you have 15 people that you have jobs for, yes. but you can't find them. Cannot. How much money in lost business is there in not being able to hire the people that you want? Around $5 million in top line revenue. $5 million. Yeah. That would be here, and that presumably you'd be paying taxes on. Obviously, And that yeah. would go into people's pockets and would be going out into the broader economy. Yeah. What is your theory about where those 15 people are right now? I honestly have no idea where they are. She suspects some people may be sitting out because of a recent change in the way many of us look at work. I think it's fulfillment. I think it's culture. I think people really want to feel as though they are appreciated. I mean, Beyonce's song, she said, release your job. A lot of people release their jobs. <laughs> they don't, and they realize, I mean, it's an overall feeling of being fed up yeah. and being taken for granted. But there's more, according to one economist. Some non-working men face a skills mismatch. A third have criminal records, making them ineligible for many jobs and making employers hesitant to hire them. And many rely on safety nets, such as disability. So you may wonder, what are these guys doing instead of work? Well, kind of what you might expect. Spending nearly seven hours each weekday on average, relaxing, playing games, and watching TV. So how is it, from where you're sitting, from your understanding, that people can do nothing all day and still have enough money for a bag of chips. Oh, well, it's almost as though some entity is paying them. It's almost as if somebody is not letting them fail. It's as if some giant parent somewhere has... An uncle, maybe? Could be a rich uncle, yes. 
could be a very wealthy uncle. Or it might come down to values. As many public schools have stopped offering shop class, many students have stopped even considering jobs like the ones Roe has spotlighted. Dirty or otherwise. It goes back to the stigmas and stereotypes and myths and misperceptions that are keeping guidance counselors from talking about opportunities like this to the kids in their care. It's those things that are keeping parents from putting all the options on the table. How big of an issue is it to have this many people sitting on the sideline? It's only a matter of our national identity. I think it's a giant issue. And by the time we realize how big an issue it is, we're going to have a hard time turning the temperature down.